ever crack open a research paper and feel like uh, totally lost in a sea of like gene data? Oh, yeah. I know I have. But uh, what if there was like a way to instantly see the most important changes, you know? Right. Like a map that highlights the, you know, the highest peaks. Yeah. That's where volcano plots come in. And that's what we're diving into today. How these visual tools can make even the most complex genomic data understandable. It's a great analogy. Instead of geographical features, we're looking at changes in gene expression. Okay. A volcano plot lets you quickly pinpoint which genes are going wild, becoming much more or less active, and whether those changes are statistically significant. So we're not talking about actual volcanoes, right? More like a data explosion. Yeah. What makes this better than just looking at a plain old spreadsheet? Imagine trying to find the biggest temperature swings in a year's worth of weather data. You could scroll through endless numbers, or you could look at a graph that instantly shows the hottest and coldest days. That's the power of a volcano plot. Okay, I'm starting to see the appeal, but uh, let's break down how to actually read one of these things. What are we looking at exactly? Think of a scatter plot with two axes. The horizontal one, the x-axis, shows us the log two-fold change. Basically, how much gene's activity has increased or decreased. A positive value means it's more active. A negative value means less active. So like turning up the volume on your music, a two-fold increase is doubling the loudness. Exactly. And the further a point is to the right on the x-axis, the more that Gene's expression has ramped up, the further to the left, the more it's been dialed down. Got it. So what about the vertical axis? That's the y-axis, and it shows the negative log 10 p-value. Yeah. Now, p-values tell us how likely it is that the change we're seeing is just random chance. The higher the point on the y-axis, the more confident we are that the change is real and meaningful. So if a point is way up high on the y-axis A and D, far to the right or left on the x-axis, that's a gene worth paying attention to. Absolutely. That's where the volcano shape comes in. Those points that are far from the center, forming the slopes, represent genes with both large changes in expression and D, a high statistical significance. Okay, this is starting to click. So those points that are erupting upwards like lava are the genes that are really active. Right. And the ones way down low are taking a nap. A great way to visualize it and to bring in a real world example. Imagine this plot is showing us genes in a tumor compared to healthy cells. Those highly upregulated genes, the ones forming those peaks, could be driving the cancer's growth. Whoa, now that's where it gets really interesting. So researchers could use this to find targets for new drugs, right? Exactly. By identifying genes that are going haywire in the tumor, they can start to develop therapies that specifically target those genes potentially stopping the cancer in its tracks. That's incredible. Just by looking at this visual representation, we can potentially unlock new treatments. The source material we have actually highlights two specific genes, Gen960 and Gen962, which are significantly downregulated and upregulated, respectively. These are the stars of the show because their expression levels are changing dramatically in response to whatever condition is being studied. So in a tumor, those could be the genes responsible for making the cells grow uncontrollably. Potentially, and the beauty of this is that we can quickly see this by glancing at the volcano plot, no need to wade through endless spreadsheets. It's a powerful tool for making sense of complex data. Okay, I'm sold on the why of volcano plots. Now I'm curious about the how how are these things actually made? Well, before you can even think about creating a volcano plot, you need to perform something called differential gene expression analysis. This involves using specialized software packages to compare gene expression levels between different conditions like a treatment group versus a control group. So we need to do some number crunching first to figure out which genes are changing and by how much. Then we can feed that data into a program that creates the visualization. Precisely, these analyses give you the two key ingredients we need for our plot, the log two-fold change and the p-value for each gene. These values become the coordinates for plotting each point on our volcano plot. So each gene gets its own unique location on the plot based on its expression change and the statistical significance of that change. Exactly. And there are several tools out there that can help you generate these plots. Mm -hmm. A popular choice is the statistical programming language are especially when used with the Plot 2 package. There's also a package called Enhanced Volcano, specifically designed for creating publication quality volcano plots. So there are options for both seasoned programmers and those who might prefer a more user-friendly interface. Absolutely. And what's really interesting is that even good old Excel can be used to create a basic volcano plot, although it might not offer the same level of customization and flexibility as more specialized software. 
I love how versatile this visualization technique is. It's accessible to a wide range of users. That makes me wonder, are there ways to customize these plots to make them even more insightful? I mean, you can't beat a good visual. You're absolutely right. It's not just about generating the plot. It's about making it tell a clear and compelling story. Ooh, tell me more. What kind of customizations are we talking about? Well, the source material we're looking at mentions adding color coding to visually distinguish between upregulated and downregulated genes. You can also highlight specific genes of interest, making it easier to focus on the key players in your data set. Think of it like using different colors and labels on a map to highlight important landmarks. So it's all about making the plot as clear and informative as possible, even when dealing with a lot of data. It sounds like there's a real art to crafting a good volcano plot. That's a great way to put it. And as we delve deeper into the applications of volcano plots, you'll see how this art can truly be used to unlock incredible insights. For example, have you ever wondered how scientists figure out how a new drug is actually affecting the body? Well, volcano plots play a key role in that. Okay, drug development now, that's a world shrouded in mystery for most of us. How do volcano plots fit into that picture? They're actually incredibly useful in drug response studies. Let's say scientists are testing a new drug. They can use a volcano plot to see which genes are being flipped on or off by that drug. So it's like peeking inside the body and seeing how the drug is interacting with our genes at a molecular level. Precisely, this kind of analysis provides insights into the drug's mechanisms of action, basically how it's working, and can also highlight potential therapeutic benefits and even side effects. That makes sense, but how do we know if those gene changes triggered by the drug are good or bad? Could a drug accidentally switch on genes that cause harm? That's a critical point, and it's where the expertise of scientists really comes in. They don't just look at which genes are changing. They delve into what those genes actually do and how they impact biological processes. A drug might crank up the activity of a gene that promotes cell growth. Great if we're talking about wound healing, but potentially dangerous if it makes cancer cells multiply faster. So it's not just about seeing the peaks on the volcano clot. It's about understanding the story behind those peaks. What are those genes up to? Are they the good guys or the bad guys? Exactly. And this is where combining volcano plots with other tools becomes really powerful. Mm -hmm. For instance, pathway analysis can help researchers see if a group of genes that are all affected by a drug are part of the same biological pathway. Pathway analysis, that sounds intriguing. Is that like figuring out if those genes are all working together on the same task? Precisely. It's like connecting the dots to see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Let's say a drug significantly downregulates a bunch of genes. Pathway analysis might reveal that those genes are all involved in inflammation. Boom. We might have a new anti-inflammatory drug on our hands. Wow. It's like having a detective tool that helps us understand the motives of those genes and how they're working together either for good or for evil. It's a fantastic analogy, and volcano plots are right at the heart of this detective work. They help us narrow down the suspects, the genes that are changing the most, and then we can use other tools to build the case to understand what those changes really mean. I bet this is incredibly valuable in cancer research, too. Right earlier, we talked about how volcano plots could help identify potential drug targets and tumors. Absolutely, and the source material actually mentions an example of how volcano plots are being used to identify biomarkers for cancer measurable indicators of the disease. So this could potentially help with early diagnosis, right? Wow. Catching cancer at an earlier stage when treatment is more likely to be successful. That's one possibility. Biomarkers can also be used to predict how well a patient might respond to a certain treatment or to monitor the effectiveness of therapies over time. So it's like having a personalized roadmap for each patient's cancer journey. Exactly. Okay. And volcano plots are playing a key role in helping us develop and understand these biomarkers, leading to more targeted and effective treatments. But like with any powerful tool, there are also potential pitfalls we need to watch out for. Oh, that's right. The source material mentions some common mistakes people make when creating or interpreting these plots. What kind of trap should we be aware of? Well, one common mistake is setting the threshold for significance too high or too low. We're talking about the p-value again, right? How do you determine the right cutoff point? It's a delicate balance if the threshold is too stringent, meaning you only consider changes with extremely low p-values as significant. Yeah. You might miss some genuinely important genes that are showing more subtle but still meaningful changes. So it's like setting your spam filter to be super aggressive and accidentally filtering out important emails? Exactly. On the other hand, Setting the threshold too low could lead to a flood of false positives, making it hard to separate real signals from random noise. So finding that sweet spot is crucial for getting meaningful results. Absolutely. Another common mistake is having an overcrowded plot. 
Imagine trying to decipher a volcano plot with thousands of densely packed points. It'd be like trying to find a specific star in a galaxy with the naked eye. That sounds like my email inbox some days. So how do you deal with an overcrowded volcano plot? Do you just need a bigger screen? Uh-huh. Sometimes it feels that way. Yeah. But there are more strategic approaches. You can filter the data to focus on only the most significant genes, maybe those with the largest fold changes or the lowest p-values, or you can use color coding to visually group genes with similar expression patterns, making it easier to see clusters and trends. So it's all about making the plot as clear and informative as possible, even when dealing with a mountain of data. Precisely. And speaking of data, another pitfall to watch out for is incorrect data formatting. This could lead to all sorts of misleading results. So it's garbage in, garbage out. If the data itself is flawed, the volcano plot won't be able to rescue it. You got it. That's why it's crucial to ensure your data is clean, properly organized, and formatted correctly before you even start creating a volcano plot. The source material provides some helpful tips for data preparation and cleaning to avoid these issues. So we've covered the basics of reading a volcano plot, the power it holds in research, and even some pitfalls to avoid, but it feels like we've only scratched the surface. Are there other ways to enhance these plots and extract even deeper insights? Absolutely. While volcano plots are incredibly valuable on their own, they become even more insightful when combined with other data visualization and analysis techniques. For example, have you ever seen a heat map? I think so. Isn't that where you use color to represent data values, like a weather map showing temperature variations? Exactly. A heat map can be used to visualize gene expression levels across multiple samples. Imagine you're looking at a study with different treatment groups or time points. A heat map can show you how gene expression patterns change in response to those different conditions. That's fascinating. So you could use a volcano plot to initially pinpoint the most interesting genes and then zoom in on those specific genes using a heat map to see how their expression fluctuates across different treatments or over time. You've got It's like using a magnifying glass to get a closer look at those key players identified by the volcano plot. And the source material we have actually suggests using heat maps in conjunction with volcano plots to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the data. They work beautifully together. So it's like having two different lenses. The volcano plot gives us that wide angle view, highlighting the most dramatic changes. And then the heat map lets us zoom in for a more detailed look at specific genes. Exactly. And this is just one example of how we can combine different tools to gain deeper insights. The world of data visualization is full of possibilities. Remember how we talked about those overcrowded plots? Well, imagine if you could interact with the plot itself, zooming in and out of different areas, even clicking on specific genes to learn more about them. Wait, interactive volcano plots? That sounds amazing, like a Google Maps for gene data. You got it. These interactive plots can be incredibly powerful for exploring complex data sets. Instead of just seeing it, the static image, you can actively engage with the data uncovering patterns and relationships that might not be visible at first glance. So it's not just about finding the peaks on the volcano anymore. It's about digging deeper, exploring the landscape, and uncovering hidden treasures. I love that analogy. And as you delve deeper into the world of data science, you'll discover even more advanced techniques for analyzing and interpreting gene expression data. We've talked a lot about fold change and p-values, but there's a whole universe of statistical methods and machine learning algorithms out there that can help us extract even more meaning from these data sets. It sounds like we've only just begun to explore the potential of volcano plots and the insights they can unlock. Absolutely, and the most exciting part is that this field is constantly evolving. New technologies and analytical approaches are being developed all the time, pushing the boundaries of what we can learn from gene expression data. So what's the biggest takeaway for our listeners? What should they be thinking about as they encounter volcano plots in their own research or reading? I'd say the key message is this. Volcano plots are more than just pretty pictures. They're powerful tools for visualizing and understanding complex data, especially in the realm of genomics. By understanding the basics of how to read and interpret these plots, you can unlock a whole new level of insight into the fascinating world of genes and how they shape our health, our diseases, and even our response to treatments. It's like gaining a superpower, the ability to see patterns and connections that were hidden before. Exactly, and with great power comes great responsibility. It's crucial to remember that volcano plots, like any statistical tool, can be misused or misinterpreted. That's why it's so important to understand the underlying assumptions, limitations, and potential pitfalls we discussed earlier. So be critical, ask questions, and don't be afraid to dig deeper to ensure you're interpreting the data correctly. Well said, and never stop learning. 
The world of data science is constantly evolving and there's always something new to discover. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. I think that's a fantastic note to end on a huge thank you to our expert for taking us on this incredible journey through the world of volcano plots. It's been my pleasure. And to our listeners, we encourage you to keep digging deeper, keep learning, and keep using the power of data visualization to illuminate the world around us. Until next time, happy exploring 